Over. Are you friendly? Yeah, you just want a bit of loving, don't you? It could be a scold from boiling right. water. Horrible. Oh, sausage. Right now, there are dogs that need help. We don't get many toy Yorkies stuck in TV cabinets now. And there are heroes who are dedicated to saving them. I don't want to leave any animal in there. Why would you allow those dogs to look like that? Transforming their lives. It sounds like she's in a lot of distress. The nurse in me wanted to make him better. She just can't believe how lucky she is. <laughs> Finding them forever homes. I feel like a lucky boy. She deserves it after what she's been through. He's my guardian angel, aren't you, mate? And giving our four-legged best friends a second chance makes it all worthwhile. Him giving them that little ray of hope. They are the dog rescuers. Without a shadow of a doubt, this is why I do this job. On today's show, we'll be meeting some unforgettable dogs. We've got bouncy young thing, Hope, here, who's enjoying life and just happens to be blind. And we'll also meet a lovable oldie in search of a quiet life. Have you just noticed me? You've just found me. Coming up... One of the biggest dogs I've ever picked up. Inspector Anthony Joins meets his match when he rescues a rather large rock filer. I know I'm only really skinny, so I think he weighs about the same as me. <laughs> It's a sad goodbye for the owner of an elderly Akita called Bear. I'll try and repay the favour and do my best for her. Well done. See you later, Bear. And I'll be finding out how Oliver's incredible nose has transformed someone's life. Over on Merseyside, it's an unseasonably warm day. Last year when we had a heat wave, for like the four days it happened, I went to get a fan and they were sold out. So like this year I got one, like early doors. Inspector Anthony Joins is following up on a tip-off that a couple appear to have a dog despite being banned from keeping animals. The calls come in now suggesting that they're breaching their ban with a, with a Rottweiler. It says that this, the, the dog's really overweight, got really long claws and that might be because they, they know they're banned and they're scared to take it out. The couple were given a three-year ban 21 months ago for abandoning a staffy cross called Cleo, who was rescued by Anthony. The dog, I'm pretty certain, had no food or water available to her, and it was just locked in the kitchen. So we removed it, and um, they were brought before the courts. For me, one of the most frustrating parts of the job is that people won't comply with these banning orders. If we get a call to say that those people are now, you know, took on a new dog, for instance, then alarm bells ring, get around there and see what's going on and make sure that history's not repeating itself. No dog barking or anything. Bell and just try and a look. Oh, hello, mate. It's, uh, it's Anthony Joins from the RSPCA. We've had a call to say that um, you're breaching your ban with a Rottweiler. I have you got any pets at the moment? Initially, the man denies having a dog. You definitely haven't got any pets. If you have, when I put the phone on, I'm going to make a note of this conversation just to say that you've told me you haven't. If you find out that you have, then it won't look very good. So if you have, I'd just, I would just tell me and we can deal with it. Eventually, he changes his story. There is a dog after all. So, you, so you, I've got a dog? Anthony's a bit like Poirot or Columbo. Honestly, we get lied to in this job every day. They put that dog's welfare far, far down the, the list of their priorities just to protect themselves, which is really frustrating. They can't leave the dog with you whilst you're in breach of your ban. The owner's been caught out and is breaking the law by keeping a dog. <laughs> That's how frustrating it is. 
I think I'm spot on with getting to the bottom of lies. I remember when I first joined the job, my um, first chief inspector described me in my first appraisal as a Jack Russell Terrier. He said uh, I was very tenacious. I'll get to the bottom of it, hopefully. With the couple back at home, Anthony's called in the police to seize the dog. Hiya. Yeah. Hiya, yeah. you all right? Is the dog friendly? Hello, oh, you're big, aren't you? The couple say the dog was dumped on them by a cousin and they've tried to find it a new home. But I might need to do an interview with you again. All right, because you're breaching your ban. It's the biggest Rottweiler I've ever seen, I think. I think it's just because he's fat as well, but he's he's absolutely huge, isn't he? Lovely dog. All right, well, I'll be in touch. Come on, then, big lad. It's confirmed that the Rottweiler, a seven-year-old called Sky, has been cooped up in the house since they got him seven months ago. Good morning. All right, see you later. Come on. Massive, isn't he? He's quite limpy, isn't he? Bless him. He is massive. Your typical male rot, he can weigh around 50 kilos, but this humongous hound looks a lot bigger. Getting around on such a warm day must be hard going. He's probably about 10, 15, maybe 20 kilos overweight. Oh, he's a good boy. I imagine he's gained a lot of weight, probably because they've not been walking him and they've obviously been keeping him in. He's a nice dog. We'll go and get him checked over by the vet, I think. Right, should we get in? Can you, are you going to fit in there, mate? Watch it, he'll put you in. Go on, then. In you go. In you go. Go on, in. A little test for the shock absorbers. You're not going to be able to turn around, I'm sorry. You have to sit down. I promise we'll have a nice little walk in a bit, OK? Start getting that weight off you. Right. Luckily, it's only a short journey to the vets, and then hopefully it'll be a new start for this big fella. <laughs> it's a hot day on Merseyside, and Inspector Anthony Joins has just rescued an overweight Rottweiler called Sky. He's been kept hidden in a house by a couple who've previously been banned from keeping animals. Hey, buddy. He's sweating. Look at my neck, mate. Whoa! Anthony's brought the seven-year-old hot dog for a vet check. Well, after he's had some fresh air and a comfort break. You need that, mate. Or should be dead in the morning. The main worry with this rotund rotty, apart from his weight, is that he's limping. What? Come here. Sky, come here. Come here. Sit. Anthony's Sit. curious to find out just how heavy this Sit. big boy actually is. Good boy, wait. Oh, 65, 60, it's hovering on the 65.4, 65.9 mark. One of the biggest dogs I've ever picked up. I know I'm only really skinny, so I think he weighs about the same as me. <laughs> I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen, all for free. No subscription required. Download Veely now. Obesity can cause serious health problems. So Sky's getting the once over from vet Becky McAlpine. Hi. Hi, Bex. You all right? Not too bad. Thanks for seeing us at short notice. Right. Hi, handsome. You're ginormous. Right, let's have a look at these legs. I think he's lame on that back right. OK. Um, we'll start with that one. Yeah, buddy. Can you stand up for me? Do you want me to walk him or are you just going to...? I'll just start with that. Yeah. Just having a little feel down his legs to make sure they're nice and symmetrical, feeling for any swellings that are there. And then just check all the joints are moving OK and check to see if there's any resistance. So it doesn't really like having his hip pulled out. Good lad. So that might be a bit painful. Big dogs like this, especially when they're overweight, are very prone to arthritis, especially in their hips. Whenever I press on his bottom around his pelvis, he sits down, so he's quite uncomfortable. Good lad. Big breed dogs like this, at his sort of age, seven or eight, um, can get bone cancers. So we'd want to make sure that that definitely wasn't at play. It's not looking classical for that at the moment. But if he doesn't respond to pain, really, that'd be something that we were thinking about. Yeah. 
Thank you very much for seeing us as always. I really no appreciate problem. it. Right, see you later. I'll see you Thanks, later. Thanks, Okay. Come on then, big lad. He's obviously overweight, so first we're going to put him on a diet. The pain sort of seems localised to his hips, which would make me think of arthritis rather than anything too sinister. Um, but time will tell with that one. Oh, good lad. He's such a good boy. Sit down. As well as a bit of portion control, this portly pooch will need painkillers to make him more comfortable. All right. Come on. And seeing as Sky has been cooped up for months, Anthony reckons the paddock at Wirral Animal Centre will feel like a doggy paradise for him. I don't want to run around in here. Oh! He's oh. <laughs> so strong. Oh. A little bit of exercise. Oh, that feels good on your paws, huh, doesn't it? Anthony will be going back to interview the couple who'd been keeping Sky illegally. If they were afraid to take him out for fear of being caught breaching their order, he was just going to keep gaining more and more and more weight. Even now, you can see he's limping. His limping's getting sort of more pronounced. Sky will be having tests and x-rays to try and pin down the cause of his pain. We'll catch up with him later. In South London, Inspector Anthony Pulfer is on his way to collect an older dog. The owner feels his property is no longer suitable and has asked the charity if they can rehome her. The dog's possibly around 10 years of age. All I know at the moment is it's possibly an Akita-type dog. It's quite a large breed dog. But due to the gentleman living in a flat and being so many floors up and having no lift, he's very concerned that the dog just cannot walk up and down the stairs anymore. Dealing with an elderly dog and taking that dog off its owner is tough. It's got a routine and the bond with that owner as a dog has with its owner. And to change that so late in the dog's life is quite a risky thing to do. But an elderly dog and multiple flights of stairs like these may not be the best combination. Owner Ivan lives in a second floor flat. Hi, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you for your call. Um, Thanks for coming. I appreciate it's yeah. difficult circumstances. All right, so, you know, I've had, I've had her now for about the last nine years. And nine? The last couple of years I've been keeping an eye on her because she's been getting gradually slower and slower. And okay. Nine years ago, I wasn't expecting to be living in a flat. And if, if I wasn't in a flat, mm. we, wouldn't be, okay. we wouldn't be talking. What's the dog's name? Bear. Hello. She is. Oh. <laughs> yep, that's a bear. Oh, how lovely. OK. Her relationship with Ivan began in an unusual way. Yeah, so um, I went down to Hastings for the day and I was having a coffee in the old town. Yeah. And the family were there with Bear. And I was talking to them and they said they couldn't keep her. So I came back with a dog. Really? Just, just, <laughs> just to change hands in the street like that? Just changed hands. Yeah. When you got her, how old do you think she was then? She was a year, a year and a half. Mm. She is the most gentle dog I've ever had. Mm. She's absolutely fantastic. She's in excellent health. It's, it's just her strength now mm. which is letting her down. It is an emotional thing because she's been an absolutely fantastic companion for yeah. me. A few years ago, I had a few problems and I, I ended up homeless. Okay. Bear was with me when I was homeless and she got me through it. I owe her a big debt, yeah. a big debt of gratitude. So now I'll, I'll try and repay the favour and do what's best for her. Yeah, OK. Yeah. We'll do that for you. The time has come for Ivan to sign over his beloved companion. Well, there's a little squiggle at the bottom of there. She has however many years left in a home with a garden mm -hmm. and an easy life, tough as it is for yourself, um, it, it, it probably is right for her. 
The dog deserves all the care it needs from puppy right to the end of its life. So forethinking how the end of their life is going to go is quite important, whether it's giving the best quality of life or making tough decisions at certain times. Oh, bad. Come on, little girl. Right, come in, bear. Good girl. Yeah, 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 but it's just this thing. Ivan leads Bear down the two long close. flights of stairs for the last time. Well done. Good girl. And you can see it's hard going for the poor old girl. Yeah, that was uh, what would be a 20 second job was a few minutes, wasn't it? Bless. <laughs> yeah. Come on then. Oh. Here you get. Oh. oh, well done. Well done. <laughs> Girl. All right. I've got a lot of respect, sir. If you really have, no, I've got a lot of respect. Not a decision I take lightly. We'll look after her. Thank you very and, much um, for your help. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's hope it won't be long before cuddly bear finds someone who'll love her as much as Ivan, and hopefully, she'll get a garden too. Dogs have a phenomenal sense of smell. Some have up to 300 million scent receptors in their noses, compared to our 5 million. And the part of their brain that analyzes smells is believed to be 40 times larger than ours. They're capable of finding missing people, explosives, and drugs. But that's not all these super sniffers can do, as Angelica Bell has been finding out. This is Buzz, and he's no ordinary rescue dog because his nose has got him a very important job. He's training to be a medical detection dog, and he's taking me to work today. Aren't you? Should we go to work? Let's go. Come on. Good boy. Rescue dog Buzz lives with a foster family, but four days a week, he joins the team at the medical detection dogs facility near Milton Keynes. Researchers here were the first to publish clear evidence that dogs can identify cancer purely with their noses. Hello. Hi, welcome to the bio department. Hi. Mark. Mark, nice to meet you. And hey, Mark. Hi, two Marks. <laughs> you, Mark. <laughs> there you go, there's Buzz. Oh, he's so lovely. Mark Doggett is a biodetection trainer who teaches dogs to sniff out diseases. He's been working with new recruit Buzz for just two weeks. So tell us about biodetection dogs. Our dogs detect disease or in infection in samples rather than people so that they can pick out which person's got a certain disease or infection. Right, so what projects are you working on right now? At the moment we've got a urological cancers project, Parkinson's disease, malaria, bacterial infection and some other projects as well. A fully trained medical detection dog is able to positively identify a sample amongst four controls and they can sniff out things like cancer but because Buzz is still learning, they're using a training scent and only two controls. So he's searching down now. He gets position two there. You can see he's found it there. Yeah. So Mark gives him a click. And for Buzz, he just understands that click means you've done the right thing. Your food's coming for what you did then. Dogs inhale through their nostrils, but exhale through slits on the sides, allowing a clear airway for new odours to be inhaled directly into the centre of each nostril. Each nostril operates independently, allowing them to work out which direction the smell is coming from. So dogs were detecting down to parts per trillion, and to equate that's something you can visualise, it's a teaspoon of sugar in two Olympic-sized swimming pools. They could say if it was there, yes, it's there, or no, it's not there. Really? Clever Buzz still has a way to go with his eight-week training. But soon, he could be on a real project like fully qualified Labrador Sally, detecting malaria. The founder of Medical Detection Dogs is Claire Guest. So what's happening here? In these pots, there's just a small part of sock that's been worn by a child in the Gambia. Some of those children will have had malaria parasite in their blood, others haven't. The trick of the game is for the dog to learn which socks have been worn by those children and therefore what does malaria smell like. This is groundbreaking stuff. It's incredible stuff, it's incredible. And what we're learning you know, since we started is that 
every disease you can think of seems to have its own unique odour. If you can imagine the difference that's going to make for diagnosis in the future, yeah. you know, non-invasive, reliable testing that can tell you about the most serious forms of disease, cancers. We're working a lot with cancer. The charity also trains dogs to work one-on-one -on -one with people. These assistance dogs warn of an oncoming medical emergency by a change in the person's odour. One of these is Oliver, a rescued Bichon Frise who uses his amazing nose to support Christine Herwood. Oh, hi. Hi. How are you? Nice to meet you. Hello. 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 She suffers from type 1 diabetes, and Oliver alerts her when her blood sugar is either too high or too low. I can just put my blood on there, and that's working out what my blood glucose is. Lydia Swanson, a senior scent instructor, is joining us to make sure Oliver is still at the top of his game. So it's 6.6, .6, so that's is, normal range. It's so Christine doesn't okay. need to take on any insulin or glucose. No, because not yet. She's in a normal no. blood sugar range. Lydia trained Oliver specifically with samples from Christine, so he doesn't respond to anyone else's odours. He's been trained that that odour is a really good thing and that he'll get a treat for it. So that's a very basic association for him. Why yeah. did you need Oliver? Because I'm type 1 diabetic on insulin and I've got no hypo awareness whatsoever. So you can't so tell? I can't tell. I can be walking around and it can be, say, two, even one, it's dropped down two without Oliver. OK, so your blood sugar goes so low that... Yes, yeah. that was it. So this is a real and dangerous I'm, situation. Yes, yes, it really is dangerous. So how does Oliver alert you? Oliver alerts me by whinging. He will not stop whinging. He will continue until I take notice of him. You yeah. know, what is fantastic about him is that we're out and about and he's, and he's still focused. He is, Doesn't he get yes. distracted at all? No, not at all. Not at all. Wherever we go, he will always pick up my scent and he will always tell me. Well, Oliver certainly seems to be a reliable little chap. Time for me and his mum to stop for a coffee. So what was life like before you had Oliver? I didn't want to go out. I just wasn't confident. I lost all the confidence. So it must have been really yeah. scary. Yeah, it turned my life upside down. And it was just something I couldn't cope with. You know, it was awful. Oh, he's whining now. Yes, I better test my blood. It's just checking it. 8.4. Is that good or is that bad? Well, I'm in the safe zone, so it's, it's in the acceptable levels. It's not too high and not too low. So he just but picks yeah. up changes in He the, changes, yeah, in because the sugar I change levels. quite erratically. Yes. He picks it up quite quickly. He must have done thousands of alerts since I've had him, which is, you know, it's fantastic. He's, he's a safeguard, he protects me. He's very good. I don't know what I'd do without him. I couldn't live without him, to be quite honest. Rescue dog Oliver has certainly given Christine a new lease of life with his super sense of smell. But it seems a dog's nose has the potential to do even more and perhaps one day save lives. Still to come, we find out how being blind hasn't stopped Hope adapting brilliantly to her new home. She plays, she runs around, she goes for walks. I don't think being blind's made any difference to her whatsoever. Oh, you're lovely. And will old girl Bear get a clean bill of health? Oh. Eleven-year-old Akita Bear has just been signed over to Anthony Pulfer for rehoming. Hello, she was living in a second floor flat and because of her age was finding the stairs hard to manage. Pop this on you. Good dog. Okay. Oh, there you go. There's a good girl. Before she can go to kennels, she'll need to be checked over by vet Kate Arisbe. Come on. Good girl. Morning, Kate. Morning, Oh, this is Bear. Has she been socialised much? Yeah, with dogs and cats and things. Yeah, so she just wants somewhere nice and quiet. She really does. She's got a little bit of dirt on her teeth, but they're not too bad and they all seem to be there. Yeah. Right, come on, pet, can we stand up? Can you feel your tummy? Oh, dear, you are reluctant, aren't you? Yeah. All right, don't be worried, it's OK. Bear is showing signs of stress. Being separated from her owner must be scary for her. She's starting to shake, getting worried. She's only got to do it once, though, so it's all important. It's all going to help her for the future, all the health side of things. So a little blood test is being taken. 
She's a little bit anxious, so we're just going to pop the muzzle on it. Keep everybody safe. A quick blood test will show if her organs are functioning properly. Let's take a little bit of blood, okay? There we go. Do you reckon? Yep. yep. There we go, just hold that now for a second. And while they're waiting for the results, there's time to trim her claws. Just take the tips off, it'll make it more comfortable for you. Okay, it's okay. okay. Well done. Then some flea drops, and she's done. We can take your special hat off now, can't we? Take your special hat off. Good girl. Well done. You all right? Yeah, you're lovely. The good news is her blood test shows no abnormalities, so she's free to go. Thank you for your time today. Appreciate it. It's a pleasure. Well done, sweetheart. Come in. Then. Yeah, clean bill of health. You've cheered up a bit now. <laughs> yeah, I don't like the doctors either. Good girl, it's okay. Oh, well done. Good girl. The ideal situation for an older dog like Bear is a foster home, but until one is found, she's off to kennels. Hopefully she won't be there for long. Cuddly old Bear will need a home where she'll get all the bare necessities of life but other dogs have more specialist needs. Seven months ago, three puppies were handed in to Derby RSPCA. And the five-week-olds all have something in common. They're blind. Here they are, little rascals. <laughs> I'll do these two. Wah! Hello. Hello, Matt. Vet Abdul Raymond picked up on the pup's condition. Yes, you're all right. You're all right. This condition is called microthermia. It's says eyes are very small. Mm. You can see part of it, but they are not fully formed. Microthalmia, or small eye, is usually caused by a defect in early development. There's no cure or treatment for this condition, which commonly results in blindness but it's not disastrous for these pups. While for humans, sight is arguably the most dominant sense, it's smell that trumps all the others in the dog world. Still, disabled dogs can be harder to rehome. You'd have thought these pups might have had quite a wait, but no. A matter of weeks later, one of them, Little Hope, did find her forever home. Seven months on, and lurcher Collie Cross Hope is all grown up and living with the Barker family, Debbie, Neil and daughter Emma. I just thought she was just really special and she deserves a happy home. And fellow rescue dog, Patch. Patch is her brother. He's about six and he's brilliant. He gets on really well with her. She was nervous about being blind at first because we didn't know basically how um, she was going to adapt to her new surroundings. Well, she's certainly found her place at the table. Having a blind dog means certain precautions have to be taken in the home but they do have an uncanny ability to map their surroundings and memorise layouts quickly. We used to have a coffee table in the middle of the floor, but we have to move that because she'd walk into it. And we've had to keep the furniture the same. We can't move anything around because she'll just bump into it. It didn't take her long to adapt to her surroundings at all. She'd just occasionally bump into a chair leg or a table leg, but then she'd know it was there, and then you wouldn't even know she was blind looking at her now. Hope has also adapted well to outdoor living. Good girl, good girl. Now it's been a footwork on the steps that she can't see. Yeah, people. Being in the garden, she's fine, apart from she used to bump into the edge of the patio, so we've had to put some of this foam on so she doesn't bump into that. And she uses her ears to help her play. Good, good girl. Obviously she can't see it, but she can hear it, so that's how she uh, mm. responds to the ball. Are you ready? Watch it, watch it. Good girl. Good girl. This clever girl has also learned some new tricks too, thanks to her special bond with Emma. Lay down. She can sit, or she can give paw, and she can lie down. Lay down. Lay down. Good girl. I 
I taught her all the tricks that she learned. It took her a couple of weeks to get used to each one, but now she's got it off by heart. She knows what she's doing. Just like dogs that can see, Hope loves her walkies with the family, not forgetting Brother Patch. When they're walking, it's, it's quite good because Hope can hear Patch because he's got a collar that jingles, so she sort of walks at the side of him. And we do have to be careful of some obstacles, but I think having Patch at the side of her gives her confidence. What Hope enjoys the most is the opportunity to run around, with a bit of help from her new brother. <laughs> When Hope gets let off the lead, she always chases Patch around, and it's so nice to see, because you just wouldn't imagine a blind dog to be able to run freely in a field and have a good time. I just have to be careful that she's with Patch, because I'm frightened of her running off, because she's not really very good at recall at the moment. Um, but as long as Patch is around, she'll just follow him. Seems that a lack of sight isn't stopping Hope from living life to the full. She plays, she runs around, she goes for walks, she has lots of force. I don't think being blind's made any difference to her whatsoever. She's definitely inspiring. She's my little hero. I call her all the time. <laughs> Hope truly is one amazing dog. But what happened to the other two pups? Well, they got rehomed too, and we've got everyone together for a reunion. And here they all are. First time they've been back together? Yes, yes. it is, yep. yeah. So how's it been, having disabled dogs? Bit of a challenge? Um, a little bit with her, with her being blind and deaf. Yeah. Um, she responds to touch, but with respect to everything else, no, she's like any other dog. Well, we're here in the exercise yard. It's contained, so, you know, they're free to go. You can release the hounds. <laughs> <laughs> so we've been in this yard a few times with other dogs in the past, and they quite often go charging about. But these dogs are obviously a bit more careful at first. Yeah, yeah, she'd have to uh, map it out for a while first before yeah. she got used to it. Work out where everything is. Yeah. How does she manage at home? For the first couple of months, she seemed very clumsy, banging into things, hurting herself. So we can't move the furniture. We can't. Right. We can't change anything because she's got used to. She the, knows where it all is. She now. knows where everything is. When you take them out for a walk, do you find yourself going on a familiar route that they know already? Or? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. We, I mean, I've got a park across the road to me, so we do the same route in there, meet the same dogs, and he, he gets on with everyone. So. so he knows where he is, his yeah. feeling of being... Oh, yes, definitely, yeah. Secure. Yes. You normally find she'll sort out where she wants to take you for a walk. <laughs> right. If you don't do it. She'll, she'll go out the familiar routes and sniff it out. Very, very quiet. That's what I say about these dogs. <laughs> I don't even know where they are. One's in the pond. <laughs> Got in the pond. This feels different. <laughs> Luna, oh, Luna's knocked the other one in. Now oh, they're all in. <laughs> well, it's a warm day. Yeah. Should we go for a paddle? Yeah. Come on, then. Yeah, Come on, okay. then. <laughs> Six weeks after she was signed over, and Akita Bear is still looking for her forever home. Luckily, one of the charity's amazing animal care assistants, Phil Morrison, has swooped in to try and make her life happier. She was sort of struggling a bit in the kennel, didn't really want to eat, seemed a bit depressed, so I decided to take her home and foster her. She's 10 years old. She just, it's not ideal for an old dog to have to come into a kennel, and once she got settled here after about a week, she was wolfing her food down. Bear is much more relaxed now she's in a home environment, and she's gained a companion too, Phil's rescue chihuahua, Minnie. Sometimes they'll play, they'll play more when they're out walking, but they generally just ignore each other. Sometimes Minnie will play with a toy and Bear might, might join in, but it's, uh, she just does her own thing, Bear really, just she likes to sleep a lot. Bear, Bear, what's this? Minnie, you're not helping the situation. Yep, Bear definitely prefers the quiet life. But Phil's making sure she keeps those stiff joints moving with regular walks. Along with playful Minnie. Come on then. This way. They do walk at their different speeds. Minnie's normally running around like a loony and Bear's just plodding along. Sometimes she will have a run around. 
but I think Minnie wears herself out in the sort of even the short walk that we have, so they're quite a good pair together. Today, Phil's go. brought them to the Animal Centre paddock for a spot of exercise. OK, Bear, let's go! Uh, OK. Can you make her run, Minnie? She will play with Minnie when we're out, but only sometimes when the sort of mood takes her. Bear's in a sitting down kind of mood today, but she's certainly getting out and about more than when she was stuck two storeys up in her old owner's flat. It doesn't matter if sometimes she wants to just stay at home and relax as long as she goes into the garden to do her business and then um, she's quite happy to just lay down and chill out. I can blame her. Bear, come on. Come on, good girl. Come on, sweetheart. Phil's not giving up on that walking come just on. yet. Come on then. We'll find out later if Bear can plod her way into a new permanent home. Also coming up... Oh, what's going on? It's playtime for rescued Rotty Sky. You teach that water a lesson. Good lad. And if your home is crying out for a rescue dog, we might just have the one for you. It's another warm day on Merseyside, and two weeks since Anthony rescued overweight Rotty Sky from a couple who'd been banned from keeping animals. Sky's X-ray results are now in. The absolute heartbreaking news that came out of those X-rays was that he has they found a tumour. So I was absolutely gutted. It's sad news, but there is a positive side. Now they've found the tumour, he'll get the medication he needs and have a much better quality of life. The couple Sky was living with pleaded guilty to causing him unnecessary suffering and breaching a disqualification ban. They were given a 12-month community order and banned from owning animals for five years. Anthony and the Animal Centre staff will now be ensuring that the time Sky has left is happy and pain-free. Come on, big lad. Come on, big lad. Come on, big lad. Come on, big lad. Come on. Let's go. One thing Anthony is good at is playing and helping this What's humongous this? hound cool What's off in the heat. What's this? Oh, what's going on? <laughs> oh, look at that. Hey. Once hidden away by his owners, Skye is now in good spirits and enjoying life. Do you like this monkey? Do you? <laughs> he's like the same weight as me. <laughs> because he's not well, the diet's on hold. He's had two complete roast chickens had them for his tea for the last two days. I wonder he looks happy. One last go. One there. Let's go. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> you are crazy. Oh. Come on. Oh, don't clean yourself on me. What are you doing? What are you doing? You're getting me absolutely drenched, mate. All right. Hey. He's such a lovely, big, friendly giant. And unfortunately, he's had a not too uncommon, really, um, diagnosis but for the breed. We've got to see every little moment like this as an absolute bonus. Sky's definitely getting all the love and comfort he needs at Wirral Animal Centre. But how has life panned out for Bear the Akita? She is. She's found herself a home where she fits right in. I've got quite a few teddy bears, and when we saw Bear, I just thought, well, she just added to my collection. <laughs> New owners Tracy and David Kenny spotted Bear on daytime TV. And they were doing a section on old dogs that needed forever homes, and we saw Bear on there, and we said, we've got to give her a home. We found out where she was, and we went along, and we fell in love with her immediately. Yes, she's Man, look at her, she's beautiful. Hi, Bear, they're talking about you. Until then, we had never considered having a dog because we had two cats. We weren't sure how the cats were going to cope with her, but to be honest with you, they're fine. They kiss noses and they get on great. 
greet me, aren't you? Bear's previous owner lived in a second floor flat, making it a long journey for her to go to the loo. Now, this lucky old lady has no such worries. She likes the garden, so she's out there as much as possible. Give her a sunny day, she's out there sunbathing. She's going to love it in the summer. She's got that whole garden to herself. <laughs> well, apart from those two cats, I thought they liked each other. And it's not just Bear reaping the rewards of her new home. She's also helping Tracy, who's recently had surgery. I had a spinal fusion, which is my fourth back operation. One of the things to help me recover is walking. Without Bear, I don't think I'd have the motivation. She gives me the motivation to get out the house and actually walk. Come on. She's helping me heal, so it's vital that I've got her. Looks like our Care Bear has got a new lease of life too and now loves her walks. Going down to the woods today is definitely doing her good. She does have a sprightly side to her where she'll have a little bit of a trot and a run. Um, she's a pleasure to walk in all fairness, absolute pleasure. It's the best thing we ever did. Yeah. She has completed our home, our lives. Yeah. She's the most wonderful, wonderful dog. She's got the most beautiful nature. We couldn't have asked for more. We feel really blessed. She's going to be loved for the rest yeah. of her days. Yep, definitely. We're very glad to hear it. Seems it was the best thing for Bear to be signed over after all. As you've seen in the programme, Many rescue dogs don't have the best start in life, but that doesn't mean that they can't make incredible pets. The RSPCA care for thousands of them, and there's often lots of work that needs to be done to get them ready for rehoming. And here's just one of the wonderful dogs they've been looking after. This is Loki. He's a two-year-old English Bull Terrier cross Staffordshire Bull Terrier, and he's been with us here at the RSPCA in Derby for just over six months now. Loki came into the centre after his owners could no longer look after him. Loki has adjusted well to life in the kennels. Hi, Loki. Good boy. Good boy. It makes me feel really sad to know that Loki hasn't found his forever home yet. He just needs someone to give him that love and attention and further training, and I think he'll make a great companion. Sit. Paul. Good boy. Loki ideally needs an owner that has experience of the bull breed. Um, he needs to be left for no more than two hours and um, it needs to be an adult-only home. Loki loves nothing more than going on a long walk. He loves playing tug and he loves playing ball. Loki deserves his forever home because he's got so much love to give. Dog in the Midlands area, are you able to accept over? Are you friendly? Yeah, you just want a bit of loving, don't you? It could be a scold from boiling right. water. Horrible. Oh, sausage. Right now, there are dogs that need help. We don't get very toy Yorkies stuck in TV cabinets now. And there are heroes who are dedicated to saving them. I don't want to leave any animal in there. Why would you allow those dogs to look like that? Transforming their lives. It sounds like she's in a lot of distress. The nurse in me wanted to make him better. She just can't believe how lucky she is. <laughs> Finding them forever homes. I feel like a lucky boy. She deserves it after what she's been through. I think he's my guardian angel, aren't you, mate? And giving our four-legged best friends a second chance makes it all worthwhile. Him giving them that little ray of hope. They are the dog rescuers. Without a shadow of a doubt, this is why I do this job. Hello, and welcome to the dog rescuers. Today's show is about dogs whose owners can't or won't take care of them anymore, like Chino here, who was found abandoned in the most terrible state. We'll hear her incredible story of survival later. Won't we? You're going to be the star. Just stay here. I can't get up. Coming up. Hello, sausage. Inspector Sarah Gardner meets a dog with a skin condition that's causing him to constantly itch. Oh, darling, that looks really sore. But his owner's bad health means they can't give him the care he needs. It, you know, he can't continue as he is, can he? 
No, we can't. No. It's alright, darling. It's okay. Inspector Anthony Pulfer rescues a helpless dog who's been cruelly abandoned. It's just, just, just unimaginable. I've never ever had that in my career to find an animal in such a, a vulnerable position. And we'll meet some of the sweetest puppies we've ever had on the show who were left alone in suffocating heat. They were so unpuppy like They were very quiet, very thirsty. And to see them now acting like proper puppies and causing chaos is just lovely because they are little personalities again, which is brilliant. I know you. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Did you manage to get that goose? No, it wasn't there. First, we're in Derby with Inspector Sarah Gardner. Um, we're off to a job regarding a Shih Tzu that has no fur and blackened skin. It suggests a flea allergy, um, potentially a long-term flea allergy. Uh, if the skin's blackened, um, potentially infection. Sometimes it's not quite what it seems, but if it's a white dog and it's got black skin, then there's definitely something going wrong there. The moment you knock on a door, you never really know what you're going to walk into. You have your allegation in your head, but until you've walked through that door, you have no idea what you're going to be greeted with. bother you. Um, RSPCA, yeah. I've had a call about your dog saying uh, that it's got a really bad, well, skin problem, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, he has, yeah. Well, it is because I can't get out. It's my white queen, isn't it? All right, OK. <laughs> Hello, sausage. Hello. He's showing your back, Mocker. Yeah, yeah. What's his name? Hello, darling. Charlie. Charlie? Yes, it's me. All right. Oh, darling, that looks really sore, doesn't it's it? Chewing his self away. Yeah, you can smell it on him, can't you? And is it something he's always had a bit of a problem with his skin? He's always had a problem with his skin. Yeah. What we normally do is cut him short Charlie. so he doesn't affect him so much, you know what I mean? Oh, sausage. Charlie's skin is black, hot and matted. It's obviously really bothering him as he's constantly scratching it. It is quite bad. And typically, your flea allergy would be around the back end, whereas this is around his trunk and on the yeah, front, yeah. which is more of a mange. Well, what's um, mange? What's, what's it's, it's from a mite. Um, it, it can be controlled. It's just a different set of medication. Oh, okay. But it would mean that he would need regular bathing and special yeah. medicated shampoos and things like that. Charlie's owners have tried to look after him, but the flea treatment they've used hasn't done the trick. And then it's just like, come back again, like, you know what I mean? And keep it on top of him, like... It's like a lot for me, like, because, like, I've got to have to be wiping and you just can't get it all, you know what I mean? Yeah. Often we will find that people's life has changed um, through situations beyond their control. And actually, what they have done previously with their dog has been great. And something's changed. So in these circumstances, um, I think we kind of bridge the gap where we are in a position to, to help them and to help the animal. Are you thinking that you might want to sign him over? Well, I, I think that, like, the best idea is because, like, I don't get the time to look after him, though. Like, no. I, I'd like to. I'd like, I'd like to, like, you know, like I used Hello. to take him to the park and have off, like, yeah. the next door neighbour, but I just don't get the time now to look after my wife. That's what the problem is. No. Well, have a word with your wife and see what you want to do. Charlie's owners have their own health difficulties. Because of my problems, I've, 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 we can't do what... Yeah. He's got a skin problem. He so. has, yeah. Yeah, needs quite a bit and of work, that. really bad. Well, if you want, I can, I can, I can take him. We can rehome him. He's, and... a, he's a lovely dog. Yeah, he seems like a lovely yeah, little boy. He is. I used to get someone to come and take him and... Him and yeah. That, that, but that, that's quite expensive for it him. It is, yeah. Now. Yeah. But you've got him walk, walking these days. I guess we just said I can't walk that far now, like, you know, Mike. Like, you know, it's not right. No, no. It's not it... to walk. 
I think you have to wear many hats when you do this job. It's about empathy, it's about understanding people's situations, and ultimately it's about understanding the needs of that dog in that situation and ensuring that the best thing happens for them. It's just making them worse and worse, you know what I mean? Like, women carrying on like kids. It just makes you feel bad, doesn't it, you know what I mean? Yeah. It, you know, we can't continue as he is, can he? No, we can't. No. It, it, it can't, cos he's... To me, he's suffering. You're like punishing him, aren't you, really? That's what it is, you know what I mean? They agree to sign Charlie over, knowing that it's best for him to go to a new family who have the time to look after him properly. You can see how clearly they love him. Do you want me to bring him in so you can say goodbye? Yeah. And it is sad that they're upset by handing him over, but, you know, they've done the right thing for him. There we are. Hello, Charlie. There, there we are. are. I think once he's cleaned up and he's got his treatment, he's a little dog, he's, he'd make a lovely, lovely little, lovely little companion. See you on the other side. For now, it's off to the vets to get poor Charlie properly treated. Hi, Charlie. Eight-year-old Shih Tzu Charlie has been signed over to Sarah Gardner. He has significant fur loss and black skin. Come on, Charlie. <laughs> He's a bit chatty. Charlie likes the sound of his own voice. He does. Oh, that's sweetheart. And now he's on vet Christine Jameson's table, it's clear how extensive the problem is. Certainly got a skin condition. I think that goes without saying. The most likely cause is probably fleas. Common things are common. But there are not really anything obvious on him. So we would treat him for fleas anyway but it also might be worth ruling out other parasites like mange, which we can check out with a skin scrape. And it also could be that he's actually allergic to something. So we're just going to need to work our way through everything in a logical manner to get to the bottom of it. The darkening of the skin is because it's been going on a long time and the skin pigmentation changes. You need to get your skin sorted out, make you feel better, sweetheart. Good groom. With those silly mats, eh? Christine is going to take four sets of skin scrapings from different areas of Charlie's body to analyse for parasites. Right. Good boy. Good boy. Good lad. There's a good boy. What a good little soldier. That's the first one. There we are. Liked you a minute ago. Yes, it's fallen out with me big time now. No, I'm not so keen. But we need to do it from multiple sites because you only need a few to cause a problem and you've got to give yourself a good chance of getting them, finding them. There's a there good we go. boy. It's okay. There we go, sweet pea. Good lad. Hmm? While they wait for the results of the scrapings, Christine has an idea. Are you going to have a bath first, though, little man? Could let Auntie Charlotte bath you at West Hallam. She's done a grooming as well. She may look handsome. Oh, we'd like that. I think that would be a Charlie. really good idea. Come on, then. We're going to go and have a nice bath. Oh, he's a big lad. We'll see how Charlie's transformation goes later. Good boy. Charlie's owners made the right decision to hand him over, but some dogs aren't that lucky. Every year, tens of thousands of dogs are abandoned and left to fend for themselves. And that's just what happened to this beauty, Belgian Shepherd Chino. Three days ago, Inspector Anthony Polfer was called to an emergency where a dog had been found in someone's garden with its front legs bandaged up. Immediately obvious to me was this dog was unable to walk and also that it, it had some recent veterinary treatment. Uh, the bandages that were on its front legs was certainly not something that a member of the public would put on those legs. All right, sweetheart. There were very old bandages that had possibly been on there a few days, very weighty, quite wet. Come on, sweetheart. 
the damage to her legs was so bad that she physically couldn't walk. So I do generally think she'd been dumped there by her previous owner. Come on, sweetheart. Good girl. It's OK. You know, it's inexcusable. Thank God for members of the public that phoned the RSP said, It's all right, darling. It's OK. Yeah, it's, it's mind-blowing sometimes what, 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 what you find in this job. Anthony took the dog straight to the vets to see what was going on underneath the bandages. The bandage on the, uh, the front right leg then showed a, a catheter, which only really, you know, is, is obviously put in an animal through a veterinary surgeon. On the other leg, there was lots of intermittent wounds. I mean, this dog possibly had been hit by a car previously um, and received some initial veterinary treatment. It's just, just, just unimaginable. I've never, ever had that in my career to find an animal in such a, a vulnerable position. The dog's microchip revealed this poor animal is a two-year-old female called Chino. Anthony contacted her registered owner and learned she used to be a security dog but was sold a year ago and there are no records on who to. He's brought Chino to veterinary surgeon Laura Ruiz Oliver. Hello, Hello how morning. are you? Good morning. Well, thank you for seeing me. No problem, pleasure. Hello. This is, this is Chino. Okay. She's a two-year-old Belgian Shepherd. Okay, good girl. She's had the buster on just to try and okay. stop her from maybe interfering with down here, the legs. Yeah, it looks very swollen as well, apart from that, it okay. looks like there's some neurological damage as well. Okay. I think probably she's got radial nerve paralysis by the looks of it, the okay. way she's holding the leg. Mm. And that's quite common when the animals are dragged on the, uh, on the road by a car, and sometimes that all the nerves under the armpit, they are pulled and damaged. So, okay. so we need to check all that. As well as nerve damage, Laura will be looking for infection and broken bones. But first, she's checking Chino's good legs. The nerve supply of the back leg seems to be quite good. So, you know, in terms of how we're going to manage the left foreleg, it's quite important to know how all the other legs are working as well. No pain on the spine, which is great as well. It's a bit more, a bit sore, this leg, actually. It's a bit swollen. Good girl. A bit hot, so there's quite a lot of inflammation there, probably because of the infected wounds and because it's infected. Literally, kind of the skin is dying off a little bit. And underneath, look, Anthony, is the same. Actually, the main part is all, oh. or is, it has been abused oh. around here. Um, there is a skin infection yeah. with, um, you know, quite a lot of bacteria in it, which might run the risk of, yeah. you know, if it progresses all the way up, you know, affecting the whole leg. And that put her life at risk. Exactly. Laura suspects the left foreleg has profound nerve damage, but she needs to test how far up the loss of sensation goes. Okay. Let's see if you can feel anything, shall we? See whether can, she can see. Let's see, see whether she's got some sensitivity there. I don't think she can feel very much here. So sad to see. Uh, she can't feel anything, unfortunately. Obviously, we can't leave the leg like this. We need to do something yeah. fairly quickly. Yeah. I'm probably thinking about leg amputation because mm. in cases when there is a neurological damage, a neurological impairment, amputation is actually the absolute surgical indication for that condition. The prognosis is what Anthony feared. Chino will have to have her leg amputated. You know, this leg probably could never have been saved, but it's the not treating, the not acting, which is so frustrating and uh, completely unnecessary. For now, she will rest until tomorrow's major surgery. Does that make like a warning? for name, please? Yeah. Every 30 seconds, someone calls a helpline to report an abused or neglected animal and there are scores of animal centres across the country who provide a safe place for these animals to rest and be cared for. One of those is Blackberry Farm in Aylesbury. Kerry Grace is preparing the pens for playtime for a litter of 10 dumped puppies. Before the puppies come in here, we have to completely disinfect the area. When they came in, they had really bad diarrhoea. Um, and because of their age, they've got such a low immune system as well, so we have to make sure it's all really clean. Inspector Mel Fisher brought these guys to the centre a few weeks ago and they weren't in the best state. Oh, they're so cute. Hello, 
puppies. <laughs> Hello, how have you been? Hello, everyone. So how are they doing? They're doing really well. Um, when they first came in, they were lethargic. Um, and they were quite quiet. They did have diarrhea. It was quite bad, and they did have blood in it as well, so we we're all quite worried. And then they've been on some worming treatment, and the bigger dogs, because they seem to have sort of a better immune system, um, it has worn off with them. Some of the littler ones have still got diarrhea, so we've had to separate them. Shockingly, Mel found them along with six other abandoned puppies under a piece of plastic inside a rubbish bin in a field. When I got them out of the bin, it was that what was during the hot spell, so they were all panting wow. and they were all really quiet. Yeah. Um, especially the little ones because they were just in such baking heat. They were so unpuppy like, they were very quiet, very thirsty. Um, and to see them now acting like proper puppies and causing chaos is just lovely because they are little personalities again, which is brilliant. <laughs> oh, that is the microphone there, little one. Yes, you're gorgeous. You're trouble. Yes, you are. It's a far cry from that bin for these four. They are lovely and they crazy are. and just what puppies should be doing. Yeah, it's good they've got each other's hey, flavours as well. Thanks. And we try to socialise them as much as possible. Yeah. Um, so we get them out every day to play and things like that. And being puppies, it won't take long for them to find new homes. Puppies do go really, really quick, but um, we make sure that the owners that are going to take them home have plenty of time to spend with them, properly socialising them, because growing up in kennels isn't great for them. So we definitely make sure they've got a really good home to go to. The ten puppies were split into groups, according to their sizes and play styles. The two smallest were Norman and Agnes. They're a lot brighter as well, and um, look, it's great to see Norman looking a bit chubbier like he should do as a pug, because he was quite scrawny when he first came in. Yeah. We purposely put them together, because um, they do like playing together, and they have really sort of similar play styles as well um, with the other ones, because they're a lot bigger and more boisterous. Um, Poor little Norman got bullied a little bit. So um, now that we've separated them, um, they're getting on really great. Most of the day, they just like chilling, um, and then they come out to socialise together as well. Um, they're definitely best friends. <laughs> I do love Norman. <laughs> the biggest two are called Davina and Jim. So they're much more boisterous how they play, so we just have to separate them um, from the little ones. Again, they're really bouncy, really yeah. interacting with people. Yeah, they're full of life. They've got so much energy um, and they just play all day. So they've got loads of toys to keep them occupied. These two also came to the centre with bad stomachs and diarrhoea. They are a little bit older than the others, we think, and because of their larger breed, their immune system is a little bit stronger, so they manage to fire off much quicker. Mel's investigation into how these guys came to be dumped in a bin has hit a dead end, and there is no way to find out who did something so cruel. But at least they were rescued and have the chance to find new homes. Find out how they do later on. Hello again, you little monkey. Earlier, Sarah Gardner took scruffy, itchy Charlie for some skin scrapes at the vets. And while they wait for the results, she's taken him to Charlotte Reynolds, who will tackle his tangles. Where do you want him? We'll just pop him on here. Come on, soldier. Good lad. Oh, dear me. Right, then. OK. So, yeah, if you just hold him there, I'll start. I'll just take it all off. I think so, yeah. It's, it's pretty patchy, and we can get underneath all that. Don't look at me like that. You'll feel better afterwards. Oh, he's a mess, isn't he? He is. Bless him. Little, uh, allow it to breathe. And we can get the medication on him. Easier. Do you have to film while they're doing my bum? Oh, it's a good boy. See? It's not that bad, is it? It's as if I have in your bum shape. <laughs> 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 You're not going to win any beauty contests, I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. It's better. 
water already, doesn't it? Mm. Look, there's mats. Mm. Uh. Charlotte washes him with an antibacterial shampoo to get rid of the grease and open up the pores so the skin medication can be effective. It's got um, soothing properties in, so it'll help yeah. take the itch out straight away. And it'll start to cool skin. Well, Charlie certainly has a way with the ladies. No. Must be those eyes. You are very sweet, actually. He is, isn't he? Mm, I think Daisy might need a little brother. Amazing, isn't that? Yeah. Oh. Isn't it nice? Uh -oh. Yeah. <laughs> the skin's looking a bit better already. Yeah. It's taken the greasy out. Yes. It has, isn't it? It's not as not hot. hot. No. He's given an anti-parasitic treatment. I'm just going to pop it on in different places. I think he'll make a lovely pet. He's um, a really lovely dog, a loving dog, and all he just wants is a bit of attention. Slightly fallen in love with him myself, actually. Now Charlie's angels have finished with him, he'll be taken to a shelter where the search for his new family can begin. Coming up, abandoned Belgian shepherd Chino goes in for surgery to remove her leg, and it's not a minute too soon. It's much worse than yesterday when we saw her in the consultation. It's all going necrotic, and, and it's quite the skin is lying off here underneath as well. Up. Belgian shepherd Good Chino was found abandoned on the side of a road with her legs in bandages. She's barely even using this leg. OK, so that, we're going to start the induction now. When they were removed, they revealed a damaged, infected leg that needed to be urgently amputated. I'm going to set her up for an X-ray. So you have an infection of a limb, can pass into the bloodstream, and therefore, all the bacteria and the toxins of the limb would pass into the bloodstream, and therefore, the rest of the body and the, the animal could die. Before Laura operates, she sedates and x rays Chino to check she has no other internal injuries that could complicate her surgery. There could be some trauma in the chest or in the abdomen, so it's quite important that we check those, checking the lungs for any contusions or rib fractures. She seems quite stable from the cardiovascular point of view. Her heart and lungs seem to be quite stable. But we need to check those uh, before we start the long anaesthetic. You were OK? Yeah. Perfect. That's fine. We're ready to go. OK. She has been on a course of antibiotics and intravenous fluids to prepare her body for surgery. You can see the legs here, how they are. It's much worse than yesterday when we saw her in the consultation. It's all going necrotic and, and it's quite, but the skin is lying off here underneath as well. So you don't mind to start clipping her. We'll do a white clip yeah. for me and, you know, we'll amputate uh, quite proximal yeah. to the joint. The leg is suspended to keep the area sterile, and a padded bandage is wrapped around the limb to reduce swelling and fluid retention at the surgical site. OK, so um, we're going to do um, amputation at the level of the mid-humerus. Mid so pretty much we're going to do an incision around here. It's not something that we do, you know, I mean, we normally repair more legs than we amputate, which is a good thing. Uh, but sometimes, I mean, in cases like this, when there's, there is a neurological deficit, amputation is the absolute indication for cases like this. It's a big and bloody operation. So, so at the moment, we're outlining the area where we're going to resex. Laura cuts through the skin and muscle and reaches a number of major blood vessels that each need to be tied off. Normally, the arteries come with the vein together, so there's normally two big vessels next to each other. There's, um, you know, four big ones, uh, and then, you know, little ones as well. 
That's the vessel that supplies most of the legs, so it's important to get it ligated. But the swollen, infected limb is adding a complication to the surgery. An amputation is um, a straight, straightforward procedure. Unfortunately, in cases in which the leg is inflamed and infected, it becomes very challenging because the tissues are very inflamed, the blood vessels are enlarged and much more prominent, and therefore it's much more difficult to control the bleeding. Could I have some more swaps, please, Shannon? Thank you. There's certain vessels um, in, the, in the leg, they are quite big. So, for example, you, if you cut um, a big vein or a big artery without tying it off, then, I mean, the bleeding is unstoppable. It's always a messy operation because you're taking a leg out. Could, I, could you just get me some soaps, please? More soaps, that would be great. Thank you. Now the vessels are tied off, it's time to saw the bone. Look away if you're having your tea. Is she okay? Yeah. Great. Okay. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so let's take the leg off. How is she doing? Yeah, fine. Heart rate's coming down. I love surgery. It would be my hobby if it wasn't my job, I, I think. It's nice to be able to heal animals and to make their lives better. So I think I'm, I'm really honored to be able to do that. Nearly there. Maybe one before last. Okay. It's taken two hours and more than 30 stitches to safely amputate Chino's leg. The return to life in, in amputation is actually quite good. So after, you know, after they have like the, their surgery, it's quite amazing how they cope, you know. So, and also they have three other legs, which makes a difference too. What a brave girl. It's a long road to recovery for poor Chino, and we'll see how she adjusts to life as a tripod later. Now it's time to catch up with Charlie the Shih Tzu, who had an itchy, painful skin complaint that had gone untreated for months. Hello, sausage. Cheeky chap Charlie was handed over for rehoming to Inspector Sarah Gardner. Oh, darling, that looks really sore. He had extensive fur loss and itchy, irritating skin. The most likely cause is probably fleas, but there are not really anything obvious on him but his bedraggled appearance softened the heart of those who met him. You are very sweet, actually. He is, isn't he? Mm, I think Daisy might need a little brother. <laughs> <laughs> and his search for a new home took less than 24 hours. Come on, baby. He's now living with Charlotte Reynolds, the person who groomed him. So I first decided I really wanted him was when I was bathing him. And he just looked at me and, yeah, I was like, yeah, you're coming home with me. You're coming home. Kind of fell in love with him straight away. He was a, quite a sweet little person. It was just the nurse in me that wanted to make him better, but there was just something about this little person that I just sort of fell in love with and, yeah, gave him a nice home. Charlotte has nursed Charlie and his coat back to full fluffy health. The reason for his um, skin complaints, it turns out he's got um, a lot of food allergies. He's allergic to things like meat and grain. So he's on a special fish and potato complete dog food. Come on, good boy. He's also allergic to a type of pollen, but Amen. daily medication means he can still enjoy being outdoors. Seems to be working. We're getting all his hair back. Got a bit to go on his underneath, but yeah, it's, it's coming on quite nicely. I think before when he came into us, he was he would he was been very very sore, very itchy. You know, his his skin had completely all thickened up. I think he's a lot more comfortable, a lot happier. So it doesn't really affect his day to day, and he likes his sweeties, so he can always get his tablets down in quite easily. <laughs> And he's definitely got his wag back. I love Charlie. He's just 
a big dog in a little suit is probably the best way I can describe him. He's just, he knows what he wants, he knows how to get it, and he certainly uses his puppy dog eyes to get them as well. It's just his cheekiness, and he just wants to please and be with you, and like I say, you can't be mad at him for long because he just looks at you with those big eyes and, yeah, and just gets away with it. <laughs> Good boy. Come on, then. He's become a hit at work as well. Come on, then. So I bring him most of the time to work. He, uh, he seems to like it and everyone likes him and he's certainly a big personality in the practice. Hiya, morning. Hi, Come on, hey, Charlie. Come on, kids. kids. And he gets on with all the other dogs, that the, uh, the staff dogs that they bring. And, uh, yeah, they just have a bit of a play and a bit of a sleep. He's a slacker when it comes to work. No, if he, if he can get away with just sitting there doing nothing and have loads of cuddles, he will. He deserves a bit of a, a, a comfy, easy life, considering how uncomfortable he must have been. So, yeah, so I can't begrudge him a little bit of a cuddle every now and again more often than not. He's just part of the family now, and he was right from the get-go, to be honest. I can't imagine life without Charlie now. No, no. I feel like I've had him forever. He's, uh, he's just settled in so much, and he gives just as much love back as, as we give him. Well done, Charlie. It's been just two weeks since Chino had her front left leg amputated. Good girlie. Let's go. <gasps> you ready? Good girl. Helping her recuperate is animal care assistant Steph White. Yeah, so she was a little bit sore at first, which is understandable really after an operation. Um, but she was really quick to bounce back on her feet, quite literally. She's been settling in really, really well. Um, she's been coping amazingly with only three legs. Um, she's been kind of amazing with it, super resilient, super happy. After a leg amputation, it's important a dog learns how to move with just three legs, but also that they recuperate slowly. So at the moment, um, just while she's healing from the operation, she's only on short walks, um, just to make sure that she doesn't bother the staples in the opposite leg and she doesn't open up the wound. And it's healing really, really nicely, so it's just all about keeping an eye on it, make sure it keeps nice and clean. Losing a front limb takes more time to adjust to than losing a back leg because the dog needs to learn how to counterbalance the weight of their head. I think definitely at first they tend to overcompensate slightly where the leg would have been. She has to essentially prepare herself forwards to be able to compensate for the other leg that's missing. It kind of looks like she ends up leaping, but she isn't, she's just walking normally. <laughs> So we're going to do like a little bit of basic training exercises and just see how she's getting on. If she does it with me, she might show me up. You ready? Hey, Gally, what's this? Can you sit? Good girl, very good. Good Gally. What's this? Good. You go down. Good girl, very good. It's a little bit of a workout as well without her running around, um, which is quite good for her to build up the muscles as well. Initially, it's going to be a lot more tiring for her, but I think it's something that she's going to get better at. Once the muscles build up around it, they'll be able to compensate for everything else. She is really, really sweet, really, really playful. I think she's quite an active girl, and despite having only three legs, she's doing really, really well. Um, I think she kind of likes to turn everything into a game if she can. We'll see how Chino's hunt for a new family goes later on. Coming up. If you think you've got what it takes to rehome a dog, we might have just the one for you. Good galley. Chino is adapting to life with three legs amazingly well. She has to essentially prepare herself forwards to be able to compensate for the other leg that's missing. It kind of looks like she ends up leaping, but she isn't, she's just walking normally. <laughs> And just 12 weeks after her major operation, she found her new home with the Norman family.
I really wanted a big dog. My parents wanted us to have a small dog. And when I saw her picture, I saw her picture first, and then I realised that she had a missing leg. And my parents were like, no, it's too big. And I researched the breed, and I went, no, 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 actually, she's actually a medium breed. So that, that helped in the persuasion. Hey! I kind of um, left Hannah to look and find a dog. I, I'd set some criteria. She needed to be small to medium, short haired, crossbreed, so and female. Small and, to medium, you said? Yeah, Sorry. and she's definitely female, but the rest, well. Ready? Go on. Hannah chose her, and uh, the kids fell in love with her the first time we saw her, and she's so nice. You sit. A poor. Thank you. We adopted Chino, but Chino's adopted us. When she first came to the Normans, she was still adjusting to life as a tripod. I guess the only problems would be that she sometimes falls on her face, like when she's catching the ball. And she's still very strong, like even when we're playing like with the raggy and with the duck and stuff, she's very strong. Come on, yes, I know. It's so exciting. Come on. Coming downstairs, uh, like the stairs in a house, can be a problem, so we use a harness. Come on. But otherwise, she's fine. She, you know, you wouldn't know that the leg is missing. You put your shoes in the best place. Yeah, I know it. Despite loving a snooze, her previous training as a guard dog wakes her up at just the right time. After a couple of nights, three o'clock in the morning, she started barking. And um, I'm going, she, you know, be quiet. And Hannah came down and slept with her. But in fact, we uh, had a burglar break into my wife's car. And she, you know, was alerting us. And she's just, um, you know, being a good guard dog, she knew something was going on, even though we didn't. The next time I hear a bark like that, I'll be up at the window to find out what's going on. Now we have CCTV and we have Chino. She's done really well. We are enjoying the process of having having Chino with us. Um, it's, it's, it's been fun. Mm. It's, it's been... Um, it's very yeah. sweet, very friendly. Yeah, she, she's comfortable, and that makes us comfortable. She's very playful. If she sees you with the tennis ball, if she wants a tennis ball, she isn't going to do anything until she gets a tennis ball. Oh, so close. Once the squirrels so are there, she's, yeah. she's gone, she's off. And she definitely wants to keep this garden her own. No pigeons, no squirrels, nothing else. Um, but she does tire quickly. You can see that she's putting a lot of energy into that one leg. So she'll have big bursts of energy, then she'll lie down and she'll rest. And another big burst and she'll lie down and rest. And if she goes out for a walk, really, you know, maybe 15, 20 minutes, and that's enough for her. I think this is it, as yeah, they say. really yeah. to provide a, a home for her, a loving environment, and, you know, she's part of the family. A forever it's home? A forever home, home yeah. Oh. yeah. What a fantastic turn in fortunes for this beauty, from being abandoned at a roadside with a broken leg to finding a wonderful new family home. Well done, you. And remember the ten puppies abandoned in a dustbin? Well, we're pleased to say they have all found new homes. Great news for those little guys. As you've seen in the programme, many rescue dogs don't have the best start in life. But that doesn't mean that they can't make incredible pets. The RSPCA care for thousands of them. And there's often lots of work that needs to be done to get them ready for rehoming. And here's just one of the wonderful dogs they've been looking after. This is Teddy. He is a three and a half months old German Shepherd cross Akita. He's been at Woodside Leicester for about two months or so. Ted came to us via an inspector who'd had a call to say that he'd got a damaged leg and they didn't know what to do with him. So once he'd been signed over by his original owner, then he came into our care at Woodside. Yeah. It's a shame for Ted that he's not been able to go straight into a new home, but I'm hoping that now he's getting uh, well, we can find him the right home. The perfect home for Ted would be uh, somebody with large breed experience, possibly with another dog, um, but not with small animals, because he's a bit of a chaser somebody who's going to also have time to um, carry on with his training. 
He enjoys playing as well. He loves his tennis balls uh, and he, he certainly loves his food. Ted really deserves um, the chance for a good forever home. He's had a really bad start in life and uh, he needs somebody who's going to help him get through the rest of his physio and give him the forever home he deserves. So, if you're looking for a four-legged best friend in your life, remember to make your local rescue centre your first stop, where you'll find plenty of deserving candidates desperate to brighten up your home. Next time on The Dog Rescuers. Cassie. They're just going a bit stir crazy, aren't they, Anita? Two border collies need rescuing from an owner whose life has spiralled out of control. I don't think it's very fair on them, is it, really? Living like that. It's a shaggy dog story. It's a strange looking dog, isn't he? In, in a nice way. When Inspector Anthony Joins meets elderly Alfie. He looks like a cartoon character, doesn't he? And I'm with Kevin, a very special rescue dog who's helping his owner lead a fulfilling life.